hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. In today's video, we are going to be talking about SBRs. Before we get this video started, as always, there are links down in that description where you can support the channel. The number one way that you can do that right now is by checking out the Firearm Freedom merchandise store. If you haven't checked it out yet, I promise you, you're missing out. I have a lot of designs that I'm really proud of. And I notice you guys buying them. It's making me so excited. I'm so proud. I've been seeing a few of them sell here or there, and it's just lighting me up. So I really appreciate that. I got actually three new shirt designs that are dropping in a few days, so stay tuned for that. You can pick up this shirt that I'm wearing in this video, which is my Goon Life shirt. And again, I appreciate you guys repping the brand that is Firearm Freedom. If you wanna make sure YouTube's not censoring the crap out of you, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, comment down below this video. That interaction should help make sure these videos are not being hidden from your subscription feed. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is the second time I have filmed this video. I just filmed about 20 minutes worth and I did not like the way that it was going. So I just deleted the whole thing and here we are starting over again. So I hope this one goes a little bit better. This is a hard video to make and I wanna make sure I make it right. You guys can see I'm, I'm now in a different setting. My back is feeling a lot better than the last video. A few days now have gone by, about a week, and it's it's okay. I'm walking around. I'm back in my regular job. I appreciate you guys for your support in the last video in the comments. That was awesome. It really helped me out. Before we start really digging into this video, I do not agree with the NFA. I don't agree with the ATF. If you guys want to hear my political doomer opinions on everything going on, watch any of the most recent live streams. You guys will get the idea of how I feel. So please, especially if you're watching this video before watching anything else on my channel, uh, don't just run down to the comment section saying, hey, he's making this video because he supports the ATF. It could not be further from the truth. Go check out those live streams for more information. SBRing your pistol. It is a question that I have been asked more times than I can count in the past few weeks. The ATF is on a rampage. And in the coming months, we're thinking maybe about December, the best that I can tell, maybe sooner, who knows at this point, they are looking at publishing a point sheet when it comes to large frame pistols. The ATF is now publishing or wants to publish this point sheet that simply says that not only is almost every adjustable brace on the market a no-go if it's on the pistol, it actually makes it a short-barreled rifle, but also now if you have any grip, including an angled vertical grip, would also make it an issue and also make it potentially an NFA item, including certain sights. If you had multiple sights, the overall weight of the gun, these are all things that they're trying to do rapidly. Worst part is there's not really a legislative process about it, so there's not an easy way to fight this. Talk about rogue agency. That has led a lot of people to consider, do I comply and register my gun with the ATF as a short-barreled rifle? If they approve your application for a short-barreled rifle within typically right now 30 to 60 days, you would then be allowed by the Crown to put whatever you wanted on the back. You could put a stock and it would be considered the same as far as accessories as a rifle. You could put a stock, you could put a vertical grip, you could put whatever accessories you want on it. There are a lot of other things to consider when you're looking at the ownership of an SBR. We will talk about those in a bit. There are a few different options that you have, and I've said this before in a live stream. You could either live what I call the full patriot life. Now, when we're talking about the full patriot life stuff, this is hypothetical. I'm saying that there are some people out there that could hypothetically make this decision. Take that for what you will. You can live the life of trying to not go to federal prison the best that you can, but also trying to fight where you can as far as legislation. And you can also live the life, the third option of this like middle of the road, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And that is I'm not going to SBR anything if they push this through, but I'm also not gonna put a stock on it. I'm gonna keep my brace on it and I'm gonna 
say no comply, but I'm still going to try to kind of comply with a pistol brace. Now, I think it's very disingenuous for gun tubers to get on and just feed you the rhetoric of free men don't ask permission, just throw your stock on it, don't care. When they themselves have their FFL, when they themselves have their SOT, when they comply with anything the ATF says and don't hesitate whatsoever, and they're trying to run their business and they're just trying to pitch you a really badass saying that's going to get them views. It's a very political thing to do, and I will not ever do that on this channel. I have pistols, and I also have SBRs. It would be very disingenuous for me to sit here and preach to you on how the NFA is BS, you should never do it, when I myself have SBRs. So I'm going to try to give you guys the most unbiased and, and honest opinion when it comes to all three of these things in the realistic world that we live in today. When you're looking at the, the first option of living the full patriot life, as I like to call it, right? The option of, I'm just going to throw a stock on it to hell with them. You know, it is what it is. It's my right under the constitution to own whatever I want to have. First of all, more power to you. That's, that's the, the true American way right there, in my opinion. A lot of those people that are able to make that decision may live in the middle of nowhere. A lot of those people may shoot on their own property in the middle of nowhere. They have no social media presence. They do not share photos of their firearm. They do not comment underneath YouTube videos with their profile saying, hey, screw them, I'm putting a stock on it. That, that goes out to all you guys that are commenting. That's not a good idea. To, that's not a good thing to comment out in the open in the internet sphere, okay? Those are the type of people that can make that decision. A lot of those people that I've seen do not have families, do not have kids to think about, do not have wives to think about. You know, it is what it is. They're able to live their life in that way. And that's kind of the decision you have to make. As far as the people that are in the group of potentially SBRing something. My first bit of advice to you would be, if you already have one NFA item, if you have a suppressor, if you have one SBR that like you may have done for a cloning purpose to make it look cool or whatever, I don't know that it matters, quite frankly. You're, I've always been of the mindset that if you're in it one deep or 10 deep, as much as it sucks to shell out that much money to the worst agency known to man and a crappy federal government, I don't know that it makes really any difference of how crappy the situation is. So for me, in my situation, I have multiple SBRs that I sbr long before any of this for other purposes. First of all, I have a YouTube channel. It's my business. I put these guns out there in the public site on the internet. It would be kind of dumb of me to post a felony to the internet for everyone to see. And I'd be lying to you guys if I told you any differently, and I'm not going to do that. In my eyes, I had cloning projects and other things that I wanted to get on camera. I already had suppressors. So if you're, if you're going to go with a suppressor and you're going to go with a name brand suppressor, you got to go form four. That's, there's no other way around it. For me, I was considering the SBR and I'm like, I have suppressors. What's, what's the difference at this point? I, I hate myself for doing suppressors for paying 200 bucks for something I should just have. What's the difference if I hate myself for doing an SBR? Say what you will. You may disagree with it. I'm just telling you that that was my mindset. So if I have another pistol in the collection that I'm looking at, not really based off what the ATF is doing right now, but I may do another SBR because of a project that I might have, or because I want to use that as a defensive gun in the world that we live in today. What do I mean by that? A lot of people will have an AR pistol or another pistol variation for home defense or truck defense or an EDC gun. And they don't understand that under our current climate, what we live in today, if I were to use that gun, there is a high probability, even in a justified situation, that I could wind up in court. 
And not only could I wind up in court fighting my case, but my gun could wind up in court and they could be analyzing the gun as evidence or whatever else. Prosecutors, a lot of the time, have a tendency, if it's like an AR pistol or something else, to call in a local ATF agent from a field office nearby and look over the gun and determine whether or not they feel at that time that it's an SBR or not an SBR. Is that wrong? Absolutely. Should that happen currently? No, not at all. Does it happen? Yes. So realistically, it's something to consider. If I am looking at a defensive gun that I'm gonna be carrying on my person, it would probably behoove me to make sure that everything on it is good to go because that's my gun that could wind up under the scrutiny of the current court of our world today. How is that gonna look? I'm gonna try to do what I can to not stack on additional felonies based on what the ATF is determining that day or that month. And in states like Pennsylvania, that falls under a concealed carry permit. So that's something else to consider is that you could carry that legally in your vehicle. So again, something to consider there. My main point with this kind of middle group is if you already have NFA items, <laughs> and you're questioning if you should SBR one or the other, think hard about it, but I don't know that there's really any difference of SBRing one or 10. It's kind of the same deal. It sucks no matter what way you look at it. If you have no NFA items and you're in this camp, you may want to heavily consider whether or not you want to do this, whether or not you want to jump down that NFA rabbit hole. And if you don't wanna be on the side of full Patriot life and you don't wanna be on the side of keeping the gun and just saying, well, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna kinda of have this wishy-washy way about it. I'm not gonna hypothetically go the full Patriot, but I'm also not gonna do the NFA. I'm just gonna kinda of keep the gun and hope no one says anything. At that point, you may be better off just selling that particular gun and not dealing with it at all. That, you know, that may be the decision you wanna take. You're like, hey, I don't, you know, I have a family. I don't wanna risk it. I also don't want to give the gun up or anything like that. I'm just going to sell it to somebody that wants to SBR it or wants to make another choice or whatever. So that, you know, that would be the case. But I would seriously consider whether or not you want to go down the NFA rabbit hole. NFA as a whole, that's a whole other discussion for another day. So we can go down that road another time. Finally, we can touch on the group that consistently says, hey, I'm not going to live the full Patriot life. Like I'm not going to put a stock on it hypothetically, but I'm also not going to do the NFA stuff, but no comply. And I'm going to post a picture online with my pistol brace and say no comply. This is the group that kind of agitates me the most because you kind of are complying with a pistol brace. As much as that hurts to say, I have pistol braces as well. I have them on my pistols. You know, I'm kind of complying because I am complying with what I view the ATF currently tells me is legal. So, you know, and if you were to make the decision of saying, hey, in this future where the ATF deems the pistol brace a no-go, I'm going to leave it on because I want to, you know, live that life. Cool. Why wouldn't you just put a stock on at that point? They consider it the same as a stock. So why would you take all that risk for something that is crappy being used as a stock not as comfortable as a stock doesn't work like a stock doesn't look doesn't even look cool like a stock why would you go down that road i guess it's the camp that is hopeful that something will change and their pistol brace will be good the people that are living that full patriot life are not posting about it so it is what it is when you are considering going about an sbr it's not quite just a consideration of i'm going to pay the money i'm going to fill out the paperwork and get the approval and never think about it again. When you are traveling across state lines, you have to get pre-approval. Sometimes that approval can take months and then the ATF approves you to go from one state to another state. That's horrible. That sucks. That's something to consider. If you're somebody that usually takes that gun and then brings it across state lines like consistently, it's going to be a pain in the butt for you. Also, it's really not something you want to like just leave in your car or leave unattended because if that gun gets stolen now the atf is involved now there's a stolen nfa item so it's a lot more frustrating than just like a regular gun that gets stolen also unless that gun is under a trust with other individuals 
you are the only one that can have possession of that item at all times. So if it's a home defense gun and you have a significant other in the house that you want to have access to that gun, unless they're on a trust with you, they cannot have access to that item. It's just the way it is. It's not right. It shouldn't happen. It's currently the way it is in our situation. We should figure out ways to change this. I'm saying right now, this is how it is. So these are all things to consider. When you're looking at all three of these options, you need to be very good about questioning what you want to do, why you want to go down one path or another. And quite frankly, I'm not here to point the finger at any one of you guys, because again, I have SBRs, I have pistols, I have other NFA items. I That's just the route that I have taken with the things that I have wanted to own. I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. This is how I answer people in the gun shop that I work at. So hopefully this video came across well. I made a video very similar to this back in the day and I think it needed a little bit of a revamp. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it and let me know if there's anything that I missed. I probably missed a ton. This is a huge topic. And as I already said, I already recorded a 20 minute video that I just deleted. So I may have forgotten something. If I did, I'll try to post it below in the comment section. If you guys have any other questions about this frustrating topic, please throw them down below in the comment section. You guys know I absolutely will get back to you. While you're down there, head up to that description, check out those links where you can support the channel. And as always, stay tuned for more great videos coming soon.